Welcome to the third and final football game of the night for the Football Sask North Fall Elite Academy. Good evening, it's Matt Morrison, and like I said, this is the third and final game of the night. We were blessed with two fantastic games earlier, but I think the saying is that they save the best for last. That's Team White and Team Blue. There's kickoff. Team Blue is going to return it. They'll get the football first, and that's going to be a good return as well. So a big return to kick this one off as Dean Blue will start with the football. Like I said, two close games at a seven point game at a three point game earlier. So Team Blue will start with the football led by quarterback Quinn Hofer who will go under center, there's the snap. First play is going to be a run and that's gonna go absolutely nowhere. Met by a host of Team White defenders is Corbin Larson. So that'll actually go down as a loss. We have second and 12. So second down and 12, Hofer will go to the shotgun. There's the snap, it's a good one. Pressure's coming, Hofer's able to get away from one tackle, has to get away from two. He'll dish the football off and not near enough for first down as the catch is made on the far sideline. That's number 27, Jackson Geddes, who pulls in the catch, but not nearly enough for the first down as it was Somewhat of a fire drill as soon as Quinn Hofer took the snap. Had immediate pressure from Team White, so they forced a two and out. So they're going to get the football back. As Team Blue has their punt unit out. Two returners back for Team White. Good snap, and we're going to see a fake, and that's going to go nowhere. So Team White's defense has come to play the, through the first three plays of this football game, as that's Dylan Bach who sniffed that one out. And that's going to be a turnover. So Team Blue tries the fake punt after what was a two and out. Ball gets turned over, and all of a sudden, Team White is going to go on their first offensive drive of the football game with some fantastic field position. They're led by Clark Snyder. Number 10 is the quarterback for Team White from Carrobert. He'll take the snap, the lay handoff, looking for some room and some yardage. That's number 28, Brody Nelson on the carry. So he picks up a few yards on first down. So in terms of a first down play, pick up four, second and six. Ball at the 35. Three receivers out wide. They'll go in motion. There's the snap. Little hitch pass there. That's caught by Benjamin McJanet. Gets down to the 30. So third and short, they'll say. And there's a injured member of Team White on the field. It's Tieran Braun. He's on one knee. Of course, we would like to thank Summit Sports and Health for providing the medical coverage for all SMF events during the 2020 season for the, what is the second week of the Fall Football Academy. So he'll walk off under his own power, so that's good to see. It's third and short for Team White. And they're going to go for it. 
Snyder's going to go out of the gun on third and short. Now he'll move under center, and now there's a flag down. So we'll see what that is. So they'll say procedure. So third and six now. Head coach for Team White, Brandon Leatherdale, electing to keep his offense on the field even after the penalty. Snyder's looking, and that one's in and out of the hands, over the hands of Benjamin McJanet. There's some good coverage there from Team Blue defensively as well, so they will turn the football over on down. So Team Blue will now come back out onto the field. So they'll take over at the 35. Ofer will go back under center. Men in motion, there's the snap. It's gonna be a handoff to Nelson who's gonna bust through up towards the 40. Be able to second and five now. So Hofer will now switch back to the shotgun on second down. He'll step back. He has a man that's Gettys that is caught near the sideline. A great catch there from Jackson Gettys. A good throw by Hofer too right near the sideline. And that's a great catch there by 27. Jackson Gettys on the sideline as we'll get another look. Second and five too. And Hofer put that one in a perfect spot where only his receiver could get it. There was some good defense there, some good coverage from Dylan Bach, but wasn't quite able to get there. So first and 10, Hofer. Going to hand that one off to Andrew Watman. Not much in the way of yardage there. We have second down. So good response by the Team White defense. Of course, both of these teams looking for their first win. They had losses in the opening night to the academy a few weeks back. So second and nine. See if Dean Blue can't convert. Hofer is going to send that one out to the wide side of the field. That one's incomplete. Looking for Kyler Coke. Looks like he actually ran into one of his own other receivers on the play. So... After that big first down gain, they aren't able to turn that into anything. Now out comes the punt unit. That's going to be Andrew Wapman. There's the punt. It's a good one at that. This is going to be returnable, but it bounces right past a member of Team White, and he'll jump on it. But dangerous. Play there as that one might have hit the Team White return her as well. And if it did, that would have been a live football. But for Team White, will take over with a first down of their own. Snyder out of the gun, and he'll elect to hand this one off, and absolutely nowhere to go. So great job there by the Team Blue defense. As Brody Nelson was the ball carrier, went absolutely nowhere. So they'll mark that as a loss of three, second and 13. Three receivers out wide. Snyder, they're just going to go the quick hitter to McJanet, who's going to try to 
busted up, and he should have enough for the first down. So the screen pass, hitch pass, whatever you want to call it, to Benjamin McJanet. And that one should be close to a first down. We now have an injured member of Team White on the field. And it looks as if that's number 66, Caleb Gagne. So he will receive some attention. Of course, this is the third and final game of the evening. So big thanks to everybody who tuned in to watch the live stream on Facebook Live, which wouldn't be possible without the help of the Willow Grove Pharmacy. All your home health needs, including a wide range of grab bars, poles, bathroom safety, walker, wheelchair sales, and rentals at the Willow Grove Pharmacy, which is over on Nelson Road. You can give them a call at 306 Six six five one triple zero. You can also visit them at willgrowpharmacy.ca. We would also like to thank Ignite Ignite Athletics, SGI Canada, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and Auto, Dr. Brendan Gribbett, McEwen Avenue Dental Clinic, Football Saskatchewan, TM2 Designs, Cook Insurance, the Kinsman Club of Saskatoon, Football Canada. An athlete era as well. So Gagne is still getting attended to on the field. Of course, this, like we said, third and final game of the night. Two great games earlier. The first game of the night was the Team Green 2. They escaped with a 17-10 victory against Team Yellow. And then the second game, which wrapped up not too long ago, the Green Team 1 was able to escape a victory against Team Black. That one was 17-14. So now get a look at the Academy standings. Green 1 is 2-0. Yellow will drop to 1-1. One one. Team Black is 0-2. And, and one of these two teams is going to get their first wins of the Knights as well. It's green two that has two wins. Green one. Well, both team greens are two and zero. Oh. Simplify it for you. So Gagne will head off to the team white sideline. He's got a couple of his teammates and some training staff with them, but for the most part, walking off under his own power. So that's good news for Caleb Gagne. Third and one, Snyder's going to hand that one off to Nelson, and he should have enough for the first down. So he was able to get past that first level of tackles and picks up a fresh set of downs. And no, he doesn't. It looked real good from up here, but Team Blue is going to walk away with a football. Lynn Snyder is still talking to the officials about that spot. Looked like Nelson had enough as he made it through the initial line, but either way, great job by Team Blue, and now they have the football, and they're in decent field position. Hofer is going to start the drive out of the shotgun. He's going to step back. He's going to look over the middle. Forget he's incomplete. Number Team White had a defender in that vicinity as well, but that one will fall to the turf. Bring up second down. So Team Blue will break huddle. Second and 10, 415 counting to go in first quarter. Hofer under center. He'll drop back. He has some room. Is he going to take off? He pump fakes, tries to make a move. Now he is going to pull that football down and picks up a few yards. Short of the first down. 
So we'll see what Team Blue likes to do here on third and five. But Quinhofer had a couple different options. It looked like there was a decent amount of room that opened up. On that right side of the offensive line. So he shot up there. Thought about passing it till the very end and then realized that he was probably past the line of scrimmage and couldn't. And now Team Blue is going to have to take a timeout. So Team Blue will take a timeout. Quinn Hofer will get the instruction from the sideline. Of course, Team Blue is led by head coach Brent Keeler. Team White led by head coach Brandon Leatherdale. So third and five. So after all that, we're finally ready to snap the football. Hofer will go out of the gun. Receivers in motion. A little bit of a high snap. They want a quick hitter. They get it out. Is there going to be enough for a first down? There is. That's Jackson Dean on the reception, so he'll get enough for the first down. Good play call there on third and five to pick up just enough for the first down. So that'll move the ball to the 16 yard line. So first and 10. Ofer's gonna go back under center now. Team Blue really the only team that has their quarterback go under center is the handoff there. Number 25, Corbin Larson. It's Corbin Larson on the carry. Tackle by number 27, Dylan Bach. It'll be second and long. Larson. Behind Hofer, Hofer in the shotgun, a little bit of a high snap. Hofer now is going to roll out right, feels the pressure, has a man in the end zone. He's going to take a shot. That one is got. Yes, it is. What a catch and what a throw. Jackson Dean comes away with that football and a great throw there from Quinn Hofer, who's been very good in this first quarter. And Jackson Dean just went up in tight coverage and Came away with that football. So out of the shotgun. A little bit of a high snap. There was some decent pressure that came. Hofer was forced to roll out and had a man, Jackson Dean, who was in a fight for it with a team white defender, which was Owen Summer. Jackson Dean came away with that football. Good throw, good catch, and that all leads to a 6 nothing lead for Team Blue. And the extra point is good, so that'll be a 7 nothing Team Blue lead. So we'll see what... Team White has for a response. The ball is on the tee is Waithman is going to get set to put his foot to the ball, and he does just that. It'll bounce, but very returnable. As we get up past the 35. Andrew Waithman with this number 24, Ben Lang. Ben Lang was the returner. Team White will take over. 239 to go in quarter number one. Down seven nothing. Right. 
Snyder. Out of the gun. They're going to give it to Brody Nelson, and he's just going to try to push the pile as much as he can. It's up to the 40. Close to the 40 anyways, and I think they'll mark it right there. So gain of four, we have second and six. Team White will rush to the line. There's the snap, Snyder's gonna look left. He wants to throw that way, an incomplete flag down, however. So that one was thrown by the back official as there was some contact between defender and receiver. So we'll have to see if that's what it is. But if it is, then that'll extend the drive. That's exactly what they're calling. So Team White will have the drive extend. Snyder out of the gun, Nelson to his right. Three receivers on the right side, two. Nelson will switch to Snyder's left. Couple flags down. Looks like Team Blue may have jumped. They'll give it to Nelson, who will pick up a few. Flag pending. So it is offside on Team Blue. Bring up first and five for Team White. We'll come out in the same formation. Because now we're going to go a little pitch play. Is that one's going to be close to first down yardage? Number six, Tiernan Braun. Takes that was Tiernan Braun on the reception. Here in Braun, of course, a product of Centennial Collegiates in Saskatoon. Does pick up enough for the first down. As we're into the final minute of quarter number one. So a few more plays here in the first quarter. Snyder, Nelson to his right. Braun is in motion. They'll fake the shovel pass this time and give it to Nelson, who stumbles, picks up the first down, and a little bit more. So a little bit of trickery there from Team White as they faked exactly what they did the play before to Tier and Braun. This time they handed it off to keep the defense guessing. Nelson also stumbled when he took that football too, so all things considered, a good gain is... And he was almost... Brought down by himself. There's a siren to signal the end of quarter number one. So this should be the last play of the quarter. There's the snap. Snyder feels pressure. He's just going to continue to back up and he'll just find an open member of Team White's offense and throw it towards him. Number 10, Clark Snyder throws it to nobody. That was an offensive lineman maybe. And now here comes the flag. Well, the referees will decide if they do want to call this or not, but if they do, I would assume it'd be intentional grounding. And we'll get the call. So it is indeed intentional grounding, so that'll back Team White way up as again Snyder felt the pressure coming from Team Blue's defensive line and continued to just back away and back away and I think he threw it in the direction of number 54, Keenan Hunchak. The only problem with that is that Keenan Hunchak is an offensive lineman. 
So still zeros on the clock. Quarter can't end on a penalty. So second and 25. What do you have in the playbook for second and 25? Guess we're going to find out. A little bit of a low snap. Snyder has time over the middle. That one's incomplete. Looked like he had McJanet there for a second. But good defense from Team Blue there as well. And I think we have another flag down. The never ending, the never ending quarter. Because now this one's going to go against Team Blue. It looks like it's going to be roughing the passer. We've gone from second and 25 to first and 10. And we still haven't concluded quarter number one. So here's the snap. They'll give it to Nelson again, who finds a little bit of room, picks up a few yards, no flags. So that will end quarter number one. Third time's a charm, I guess. Seven nothing, Team Blue leads after one quarter of play. Tykes on Spikes program is for three, four, five-year-old boys and girls. It's an introductory program for, for playing football. So we learn fundamental skills and we do drills and most importantly, have fun. It's just been awesome watching Nash and Deacon. You know, the brain is the brain. So if you can improve in one area, that learning kind of filters over. The sport of football teaches a lot of valuable lessons, teamwork, cooperation, work ethic. It makes me want to come back and coach more. I wouldn't have been here for four years if I didn't get excited to see the kids learning and having fun. You meet so many great people, whether it be coaches or the players too. I have yet to meet one person affiliated with Sasha Minor Football that I haven't enjoyed working with. Second quarter action underway here at Saskatoon Minor Football Field. Team White has got themselves a first and 10. Snyder out of the gun. He'll give it to Nelson, tries to make a few men miss, gets wrapped up almost at the line of scrimmage. Maybe fell forward for a yard or two, but not too much there. Good defense there again by Team Blue. They've been stout tonight. He'll give the tackle to Javen Mann. Second and eight. Snyder is going to keep it. He's going to roll out. He's going to take it himself. Flag down. Quinn Snyder is going to go for the touchdown, but there is a flag on the play, so right near the line of scrimmage. We'll have to see what that is. Is the way Team White celebrating? They're gonna insinuate that this is against Team Blue. So it's gonna be holding against Team Blue on the defensive end of things. So the touchdown for Clark Snyder will stand as again a little play action, and Snyder just took it himself as he got outside. Great job to tiptoe the sideline for Snyder and get in. That's a big score for Team White as well. They'll now attempt the extra point to try to tie this game up at sevens. Kick is up and it's off the upright. Not sure if it was tipped at the line or not, but it'll go off the upright. So Team Blue will come out of all of that with a 1.76 lead. And Team Blue will get the football back. So 
So Jackson Geddes is back to return this for Team Blue, as is Zoden Bakke. Fantastic Friday night of football here at SMF. Chilly, October, it's football weather. That's Tieran Braun that has the ball on the tee. There's the kick. It's going to bounce. It's going to stay in bounce. Geddes is going to pick it up, up towards the 30. Gets just past it, met by a host of Team White tacklers. So that's where Team Blue will take over as they look to extend their lead. Of course, we've seen some good things from Quinn Hofer so far tonight. We'll look for that to continue. So Hofer will line up under center. Larson in the backfield. Yep, they'll give it to Larson who gets wrapped up. After a few yards. Number two, Andrew Wageman takes it up the gut. Number 48, Noah Kramer. And number 33, Andrew Jackson take him down for a short gain. He'll be second and nine. So second and nine. Well, for now, in the gun. Receivers will go in motion. There's the snap. It's a good one. Hofer's going to look over the middle. That one is caught. That's going to be a first down. Potentially a little bit more, but either way, it's a first down. Jackson Dean, who had the touchdown catch, gets hit coming across the middle with the football. So Team Blue doing a good job of moving the first down stick so far tonight. 9.20 and counting to go in the first half. Boy, if you're Team Blue, you would love to extend the lead and take some time with you on this drive. Over in the gun. There's the snap. We'll get it outside. That's Geddes. It's going to cut it up. Runs into a couple of Team White tacklers, but a decent pickup on first down. They'll call it. A gain of five. And Brings up second and five. So Hofer will go to the gun. Bothman in the backfield. There's the snap. Hofer is going to look right. Wants Bakke, and that's in and out, out of the hands of Odin Bakke. So that one will go incomplete. Brings up third down. And it looks like they're going to bring out the punt unit to Team Blue. Quinn Hofer wanted his team to go for it, but Andrew Othman is going to stay in to punt this thing away instead. And Lang is back for the Team White. Bouncing punt. That one goes high, not deep as it Hangs up in the air. Lang is going to have that one bounce off him. Number two, Andrew Wageman, a guy to kick with a so they do get foul. the football back to Team White after that fumble. Porter Hansen jumped on it. And I'm assuming that we'll have some, or A, no yards flag on the play. So first and 10 for Team White. Got a new quarterback in for Team White as well. It's Lucas Franks. See what he can do. He'll take the snap. The hand off to Ben Lang. Marion Graham collection, connection. Burnett. It'll be second and eight. 
So second and eight. There's a snap. It's a low one. Franks has to pick it up off his shoelace. This gets hit as he throws, and that one's almost intercepted. Two, as Lane Higgs almost had that one go the other way as he had to pick that one up almost off the turf. And that throws off the timing of absolutely everything. And it almost led to a turnover. Instead, Team White will pump the football away. Another look at the low snap. Did a good job to go down and get it, but immediate pressure there as well from Team Blue as there's about four Team Blue defenders in there. So there's the punt, and it's a good one. Bakke will return that one. He's going to try to reverse course. Flag down. Good catch by Bakke as he tries to get away, so we'll have to see what the flag is. They're going to back Team Blue up. So Team Blue will take over just shy of their own 30. Ofer still at the controls for the offense. Wathman in the backfield. Hofer under center. There's the snap. They're going to pitch to Wathman who has to... Pick that one up. As there's all sorts of confusion. There you go. As that was Corbin Larson, rather, in the backfield. So the timing of the pitch was off. However, Team Blue is just fortunate to hop back on it. As Larson had to reach back. Pick that one up. And he lost it a second time in his feet. Tough break for Team Blue. So either way, they'll set up second and 17. There's the snap. Hofer's going to draw it back. Pressure's coming. He escapes it. Quinn Hofer's looking for a man downfield. He's going to throw on the run. That one is caught. Oh, what a great catch by Kyler Koch, who goes up and gets that one. Basically rips it out of the hands of a Team White defender. and A great job there by Quinn Hofer to extend the play as well. Right near the sideline as well as number 15, Parker Peterson came in untouched and had a clean shot at Hofer. And Hofer was able to escape that and Tyler Koch just took it out of the hands of Owen Summer. And scampers down for a big game. Great catch there by Coke. Big time yards gained on that play as well. So Team Blue trying to flip field position. They have a fresh set of downs. As that handoff on first down goes absolutely nowhere. As Jackson Gettys they gave the football to. So that's a big loss. They'll call it a loss of five. Second and 15. Just over five minutes to go here in quarter number two. So Hofer will go out of the right under center again. As he wants Bakke and Bakke just couldn't get turned around in time. That one was out of bounds anyways. So third and 15, if you're Hofer or any quarterback, your receiver's not going to get it. You might as well just throw it out of bounds. So it's a positive yards on that drive for Team Blue, however. Once was a drive that started 
inside their own territory. Wathman out to pump that one away. Gets a good punt away. Out of bounds, however. Number two, Andrew Wakeman. Make sure that White can't return it. It'll be first down White at the 26. So now Team White will come out, see what they can do with 442 to go. Offensively, Team White has done some good things as they have on the defensive side of the football as well. They have a touchdown tonight. Failed point after touchdown, however. Team Blue has a touchdown, and that's how we got to the score of 7-6. So Lucas Franks back in a quarterback here for Team White out of the shotgun. And here comes the blitz. Fortunately for Team White, it was a handoff. Number Brody Nelson. Member of Team Blue came in untouched as he tried to time that snap perfectly and did. Got thrown off by the fact that it was a handoff. So a gain of four. Second down now and six. Nelson in the backfield with Franks. There's the snap. Frank's going to take one step. He's going to air it out. Has a man. That one is incomplete. And as he was looking for Ben McJanet, it was Angelo Amute on coverage. One on one on the sideline. Now this will bring up a punting situation for Team White. Well, there's the punt. Low end over end. That one will go out of bounds. That one was punted by Tieran Braun. So Team Blue will now have another opportunity to see if they can't pad their lead before halftime with 3.26 to go in the third and final football game of the evening. So Hofer will take over with his Team Blue offense. There's the snap. Hofer's going to get that one to Larson. Not much doing there. Check that that's Waitman. Number two, Andrew Waitman takes the handoff, but he's hit at the line by number 55. So there's the whistle for the three-minute warning. We have second and ten. See what Team Blue has drawn up here. They've converted on a few big second downs so far. Wathman behind Quinn Hofer. There's the snap. Hofer's going to step back, feels the pressure. He's going to roll out right, has to get that one away, and does as reaching for the first down marker was Jackson Geddes. Close to it. Came up short by, oh, well, not very much at all. So. I think that second effort by Jackson Geddes as he tried to reach out for that first down marker kind of helped him with the spot. Third and short. So Team Blue will hustle the line. Hofer will go under center and he'll just take it himself. Did he drop that football? He might have. Team White says they have it. Not sure that they do, but they do. So Team White will come away with that football. So I'm not sure if it was on the center quarterback exchange, but Hofer just tried to dive forward and somewhere in that mass of humanity lost the football. And Team White will take over. So, uh, 
Big break here for Team White. Down 7-6 with 2.20 to go in the first half. Clark Snyder will come back in at quarterback. A little bit of a low snap. Snyder has to pick it up. Gets it away. That's Tieran Braun who has the first down and more. Tieran Braun makes another man miss. So a good pickup on first down. Is good job there by Clark Snyder too who had to pick that one up. It was a low snap and was still able to get it away. And Tieran Braun does the rest. So Team White will break huddle. The snap, and they're going to give it to Braun. Tieran Braun now trying to get outside, and he can't. Great defensive play there from Team Blue. As they're going to say Nathan Young was in on that tackle on the wide side of the field. So that'll go down for a loss. Bring up second and 13. So Snyder, who of course back in this football game after taking a few drives off, will take the snap. He'll look over the middle, and that one is incomplete. Flag down on the far side of the field, however, right near the team white sidelines. So we'll have to see what that's all about. But as it stands now, it's incomplete and third down. Flag on the play. So they're called pass interference against Team Blue. So fresh set of downs here for Team White. And we have flags all over the place. Procedure on the offense will move back five yards. So now they'll go backwards. First and 15, there's the snap. Snyder, gonna get that one out to McJanet. Tries to make a couple of men miss, but he gets wrapped up immediately. Oh, some great defense there. Nathan Jule. And on the tackle. So second down, 13 to go as we reach the final minutes of the first half. Snyder is going to keep that one himself as now he's going to have to roll out and he's just going to get out of bounds, picks up what he can, which isn't a whole ton, so this will now bring up third down. So a handful of yards there for Snyder on what was second and 13? That'll be a third six. Team White's offense is going to stay out onto the field. Why not? Snyder now looking over the middle. That one is caught. And that's a first down and more. So a third down conversion for Team White. A good throw there by Snyder as that was Tieran Braun on the reception. First down white. So Clark Snyder put that one on a little bit of a rope. But it got out there and it's a first down. So with a field goal or touchdown, Team White can take the lead, which would be huge heading into the half.
as the officials will huddle up. Of course, two great games earlier this evening as the first game of the evening saw Team Green 2 beat Team Yellow 17-10. The second game saw Team Green 1 walk away with a victory over Team Black. Team Black was driving. They were on the goal line, and that game ended in a sack. This one's shaping up to be a good one, too. There's the snap. Snyder is going to look left. He's going to go nowhere, and he's going to end up being wrapped up. As it looked like he was looking left, and then he tried to turn right. And as he did, he was met by Thorn Swayston Burns. So second and 16, Snyder is going to air one out, has a man, one-on-one -on -one coverage, it is caught. What a great catch there, Benjamin McJanet. In one-on-one -on -one coverage, just came down with that football, and Team White has the lead with 20 seconds to go in the first half. That was a good throw there by Clark Snyder as well. He was just... One-on-one -on -one coverage against Angelo Almute and McJanet, whose name we've heard quite often tonight, comes away with the football. So Team White will elect to just go for one here, the extra point. They missed on the first one, put it off the upright. Good snap. That kick is much better as well. That'll now be a 13-7. Team White lead. As we inch ever so closer to the third and final halftime of the evening. Team White will put the football on the tee. Big bounce back performance for Team White as well. If you can remember back a few weeks ago, they actually got shut out. So there's the kick. It's slow. It's squib. Aiden Bakke is going to pick it up at about the 20. He's going to try to find a seam. Decent return for Bakke. So now down by six points. We'll see how aggressive Team Blue wants to be with 14 seconds left. In the first half. So they will get their respective play calls and run to the line. Hofer will go under center. Men in motion. Hofer's going to step back. He wants the man. That one is in and out of a few hands. It looked originally like it was going to be picked off. Max Hornick had a chance at it. And then Odin Bakke, a receiver, also had a chance at it. So that went through a few different fingertips, ultimately before falling incomplete. But Quinn Hofer was playing with fire there because I was ever so close to being intercepted. So second and 10, should be the final play of the half. Hofer, take the snap, they'll elect to hand it off. Larson gets picked up. So they will get one more play in. We'll see what Team Blue has drawn up to end the half, down by six. It's a pitch to Larson, a little bit high. Larson has absolutely nowhere to go. Great defense there from 
Team White. Noah Kramer was in. There's a few players on that tackle. Matthew Noble as well. Either way, that'll end the first half of action for the third and final game tonight. So after two quarters of play, Team White leads Team Blue 13-7. Second half action coming up. for every season ever since we started the SMF Academy is for all these kids to go back to their high schools and make high school football better. I think the biggest thing they're going to learn is how to get along with other people and work towards a common goal. The sport is, is, is so great because it takes a lot of people to do the right things to make it successful. I've learned so much and I, I credit all that to the coaches here and they turned me into the player I am today and now the coach that I am and it's nice to give back to these kids as well so they can have the same experience I did. Football really develops you as a leader and it can help you encourage others and I think that's the best part about the game. I come here and I get better each week thanks to the coaches here that come and volunteer their time. They've learned the basic elementary part of committing to something, showing up on time, being a part of something, and no question that anybody involved in sport, that's the best things that come out of it. I'm Brian Giebert and I'm the Commissioner of Saskatoon Minor Football. Football is, is a game that fits all shapes and sizes. Um, it's for, for everybody, you know, boys, girls, big, tall, skinny, short. Um, it, it really has an opportunity for anybody to be in the game. And, and for me personally, football's given me so many opportunities. Um, you know, whether that's just meeting great friends to, to playing in the, in the CFL and in Vanier Cup. So um, football's been a great game and it's taught me so much more that I've carried on into life, you know, working with others, dealing with adversity, um, understanding, um, you know, how to persevere. And uh, I think football has been really great at that. The number one thing that we want kids to get out of this experience at the Playground of Pros camp is just that they fall in love with the game, that they keep coming back. Uh, football's unique. It's a late developing sport. So we need kids to be great when they're 17, 18 years old. We're getting them here as young as like nine or 10 years old at this camp, and we just want them to have a great experience. Uh, we tell all the coaches that are here, um, we're getting kids with an empty toolbox. Let's try and fill that with a few more tools that they can build upon as they get older. So, um, you know, the number one thing is we want them to want them to make sure that they want to come back and play football. And, and ultimately, that's the end goal, right? We want kids to, to come back and coach football, to referee football to play flag football late in life because it's fun they learned some skills they made some friends and if it takes them to the pros then that's just a bonus you know seeing the kids get better each even each rep um, you know from the start of a practice to the end of the practice these kids are getting better because they're learning new skills and you know can't be enough um, said about how good of learners young kids are they just need to be given a chance an opportunity a good environment and and seeing them develop these skills and figure out when and where to use them and that's what makes the coaches at this camp so great is they're they're so willing to work with them get that small coach to, to player ratio and uh and yeah seeing especially at the younger ages the the how how high and how fast that learning curve is is super exciting I think people should get involved with Saskatoon minor football because it is for everyone. We have a spot for you. Um, you know, whether you're a boy, whether you're a girl, um, you know, whether you're big, whether you're small, we have flag football, we have tackle football, and you know, you're going to meet some great friends, you're going to have some great coaches, and you're going to be a part of a, a big family.
Welcome back for the second half of the third and final football sask. Fall Elite Academy between Team Blue and Team White. A very good first half as I think we're in for more of the same second half. Matt Morrison with you. Big thanks to everybody watching on Facebook Live. So it's a 13-7 Team White lead after two quarters of play. So we'll see what these two teams have made for adjustments at halftime and how they work in the second half of this one. So it looks like Team Blue will have the ball on the tee to kick off. Start with the return. High kick, not very deep. Because that one's just going to get jumped on by a member of Team White. Wisely. So Team White will take over and seems to be decent field position. It looks as if it's going to be Clark Snyder coming back out for Team White at quarterback. Of course, Lucas Franks has got a few reps in at quarterback as well. But Snyder's back in to kick off. Quarter number three. Out of the gun. He'll fake the handoff. He has a man that was McJanet in and out of his hand. So that'll bring up second down. McJanet's had a good game. Catching the football. Four receptions, 39 yards, and a touchdown for Benjamin McJanet. So, second and 10. There's the snap. Snyder going to look to his left. Airs one out to the wide side of the field. Good throw, good catches. There's a little bit of room on that wide side of the field. That's Riley Borson. So a good pickup there for Borson. I think that's the first time that we've called his name tonight. Warren Swiston Burns in on the tackle. So a fresh set of downs for Team White as they look to extend this 13-7 lead. There's the snap. And this time they'll elect to keep the football on the ground, and there's some room for Brody Nelson. Good job there for Brody Nelson as he was able to just get outside and kept bouncing outside, and that's going to be a first down, and we have a player injured right near midfield. It's a member of Team Blue. That's Torin Swiston Burns. So he'll get attended to. Hope that he's okay. Obviously, we would like to give a big thanks to Summit Sports and Health for providing the medical coverage for all SMF events during the 2020 season. So he gets attended to. We'd also like to thank the Willow Grove Pharmacy as they have sponsored the live stream for tonight's game. The Willow Grove Pharmacy is locally owned and operated. They offer delivery of prescription medita medications. You can also book your flu shot at the Willow Grove Pharmacy over on Nelson Road. Give them a call at 306-665-1000 or visit them at willowgrovepharmacy.ca. So... Swiston Burns looks to get up under his own power. He's walking mostly under his own power as well. So we hope the best for him. Well, he'll get helped, but... I'll have to keep you updated on that. So fresh set of downs here for... Clark Snyder's crew, and he drops the snap, has to pick it up. Now he has to throw it, throws it to Brody Nelson, who fortunately was right there for him. 
as Snyder had that snap just go through his hands. And we saw earlier in the first half where Snyder ran into trouble. He just threw it away and threw to one of his own old linemen that ended in a intentional grounding penalty. But luckily for him, Brody Nelson, who's the tailback, was right there and he was able to catch it. So it looks like Snyder just turned to give the ball to Nelson before he fully secured that football. Good heads up play there by Nelson as well. Snyder now is going to air that one out to the wide side of the field again. Is that Borsman again? I think it is. Number 17, Riley Borson brings in another one. So a good catch there by Borson. However, it's not nearly enough for the first down, so... So it'll be a third down situation here for Team White, and I assume that they will be punting this football away at third and ten. Tiern Braun is out to kick this one away. Good snap, has lots of time, gets a good punt away. That one's going to bounce right near the ten-yard line. Bakke just has to kind of fall on it, and that's exactly what he does. Well, that one was bouncing around on Bakke. So Team Blue will start deep inside their own territory. The 14, 13 yard line. Quinn Hofer still in at quarterback for Team Blue. We'll go over to the shotgun to start. Of course he likes to Go under center as well. There's the snap. Quick hitter. Gets it out. Good catch. And trying to make a few men miss is Nathan Young. Check that. That's Jackson Dean. Jackson Dean has a touchdown tonight for Team Blue. Second and three, Hofer out of the gun. He'll step back. He has Gettys and overthrew him as Jackson Gettys tries to climb the ladder, but it still wasn't enough, so that'll bring up third down. That'll bring up third and about five. So they just wanted the quick hitter to Gettys in first down territory, and Quinn Hofer just might have had that football sail on him a little bit. So good job there by Team White. Force that two and out. Good pressure there from Team White as well. Well, Kramer was in to provide some pressure. So there's the punt, and it's a good one at that from Andrew Watman. Flags are down. There's a return. So we'll see what the flags are, but one can assume. There's probably no yards. Team White has been blessed with some good field position here. Be huge if they could capitalize, and they're going to bring out Lucas Franks. The quarterback, Clark Snyder, will get the drive off, see what Franks can do. Marion Graham product. There's the snap. So he'll pitch it to Lang, and he gets wrapped up and tossed down immediately. That was Nathan Jule that brought him down. And they're going to call it second and 15. So tough break on first and 10 for Team White. So second and long, bit of a low snap. Franks is going to air one out. He's got a man. That one is incomplete. Flag down. A good throw there by Franks. He was looking for Tieran Braun, who had a defender all over him. And 
That is what the flag is going to be. So Team White is going to come away with some great field position. A little bit of low snap for Franks as he just loaded up and took a shot deep. It was Lane Higgs in coverage. So that will move the chains. So Franks out of the gun. Lang to his right. He'll give it to Lang. He's going to try to get outside. He's just going to keep trying to bounce out, but cannot as Eric Boyko from Hafford made the tackle. Torin Swyston Burns was in that neighborhood as well, so he's back in the football game after being taken off earlier with an injury, so it's good to see that he's back. So second and 10. Sears will go in motion, Franks. He's gonna look to the wards of the sideline and that one is incomplete. As he was looking for Tieran Braun. Mitchell Gushlak was in coverage. So third and 10. And the Team White is going to try a field goal attempt. So that's going to be Tieran Braun on to do so. Geddes is in the end zone in case there's a chance to return. There's the snap. There's the kick. And it's good. So a good kick there by Braun. So that'll extend the Team White lead. Make it now 16-7 with 5.53 to go in the third quarter. So it looks as if Team Blue will elect to take this at the 35. So Quinn Hofer will come back out here for Team Blue. So they'll break huddle. Hofer will elect to go to the shotgun. Receivers in motion. There's the snap. Hofer is going to have to run. Gets a good block, and he's going to get wrapped up, though. Quinn Hofer had one good block, but... That only bought him so much time as Noah Kramer came in to wrap up Hofer, and that's going to go as a big sack. So Hofer again looked like he was going to have to run and try to make a play with his legs, which he's very good at. Got a good original block, but the pressure was just too much. Second, very long. As here comes some more pressure from Team White. We'll set up the screen as they'll pick up a few yards, but that's about it. As Corbin Larson picked up a handful of yards, but nowhere near the first down marker, nowhere near the original line of scrimmage for that matter. That's going to bring up third and 15. A punting situation for Team Blue. So Wathman is back to pump this football away, and that's a nice punt. That one is going to be caught and wrapped up immediately. It's Brody Nelson. Lane Higgs was in on the tackle. So Team White will take back over. Coming off of that field goal that they just kicked on their previous drive. And a 
it looks like Clark Snyder is going to check back in at quarterback for Team White. So making sure that Lucas Franks gets lots of reps. As does Clark Snyder. Receivers will go in motion. Hat off to Nelson. Tries to get past that original line, but can't. Great job by that Team Blue defense. And Torrance Weiston Burns was in there. So Nelson got a yard or two, but nothing more than that. So they'll call it second and eight. All right near midfield. Snyder takes the snap, a little low. Snyder now, he gets flushed from the pocket, has to have him, man, that was right there. Flag down, pass is complete for now to Tieran Braun. And we'll see what the flag is. Pass interference against Team Blue. So Team White will be able to keep the drive alive thanks to some undisciplined play from Team Blue. So Team White will break huddle, looking to extend their lead. There's the snap, hand off to Nelson who gets met immediately. Great job there by this Team Blue defensive unit, especially the front number seven. Swiston Burns was in there again. A couple other players were in there for Team Blue as well. So second and 11. A little bit of a low snap, Snyder lost it in his legs and he gets wrapped up immediately. So another tough snap, Swiston Burns was in there. Javen Mann was in there for Team Blue. Couple of players, choose your number, he was probably in on that tackle. So that'll now bring up a punting situation here for Team White as it was a low snap and then Snyder actually had to reach between his legs and that just threw off the Timing of everything. Island Urscheller was in there, and now there's a bad snap on the punt, and Tieran Braun is going to have to improvise, and Team Blue is now going to take over with some great field position. So another low snap that Braun couldn't handle. So Team Blue... Gonna have some good field position of their own. See what they can come up with with 224 left to go in quarter number three. So there's the snap. Looks like they're gonna try the reverse to Jackson Gettys. Makes a man miss. Gettys looking for that corner, picks up a decent chunk of yards. On first down, he's going to be close to the first down marker, a few yards away, but a good pickup there on first down for Jackson Geddes. So Geddes made a man miss in the backfield. It looked like that play could have possibly gone for a loss. But Geddes does a good job to stay on his feet. So second and two, Hofer out of the gun. They're gonna try to fake it to Gettys and Hofer is, ball is loose. And Team White says they have it, but the referees are saying he was down. Number three, Quinn Hofer shovels it. As Hofer tried to shovel pass. Luckily it was a forward pass and is ruled incomplete. So it'll actually be ruled incomplete. I thought Hofer might have kept on to, held on to it for a while. As they tried the fake and then the shovel pass. Gettys couldn't quite jump on it, but. We 
Call it incomplete. Third and two now. Team Blue's going to go for it. Hofer, good snap. Here comes the pressure. Hofer's going to load up. He has a man. Incomplete. He was looking for Jackson Gettys, but they'll say that he was out of bounds. So Team White will take over on the turnover on downs. So the back and forth battle continues here and a good defensive stand from Team White. So White will take over with Lucas Franks now in at quarterback. There's the snap. Franks is going to roll left, and he gets tracked down from behind. So Franks just kept rolling left and then ultimately ran out of real estate. So that'll go down as a sack. So Franks will get the call from the Team White sideline. Of course, they're led by Head coach Brandon Leatherdale. Second and 12. 15 seconds and counting to go in quarter number three. There's a snap. Franks is going to heave that one over the middle. Has a man. It's caught for a big gain. That's Cole Benoit that made the catch over the middle. And Benoit looks to be shaken up, but we'll get another look as Franks felt the pressure coming. As Cole Van Wall was just able to sneak out behind two Team Blue defenders. And Lane Higgs ultimately brings him down. So that'll wrap up the end of the third quarter. Van Wall is still being attended to by Medical staff, big thanks to Summit Sports and Health for providing the medical coverage for all SMF events during the 2020 season. This looks like Ben was going to get up. Fourth quarter action coming up. Quarter action begins as Team White is looking to extend their lead as there's a reverse to Ben Lang. Number 24, ben Lang struggles to get back Doesn't get line. much. I don't even know if he got back to the line of scrimmage on that play. So second and nine. So Team White will get set up. There's the snap. Franks is going to look to his right, tries to get a quick hitter away. I think that's McJanet that has the catch. He's got the first down a little bit more, but either way, it's a first down for Team White and a little pitch play to Benjamin McJanet. Janet is used to be in a little bit of discomfort, but he'll soldier on. Franks will take the snaps. 
And he's going to air one out. Has a man wide open just out of the reach of Benjamin McJanet, who had a step on his defender. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage that McJanet just flew by, and quarterback Lucas Franks just missed him because he would have been able to walk into the end zone if he caught that. So that'll bring it up second and 10. It's a big missed opportunity for Team White to extend their lead as well. Of course, they're up 16-7 with just over 10 minutes to go. In the final game of the night as now Tieran Braun will take that reverse. Picks up a good chunk of yards down close to the 25. Number six, Tieran Braun picks up seven yards. Call that again a seven, so that'll bring up third and short. So now decision time for... Brandon Leatherdale, and I think he's going to keep his offense out onto the field. Third and two. So a big third down play looms here. Franks will now go under center, and he'll just take it himself, and he'll just bust right forward. He'll push the pile. And now we're going to say Team Blue recovered a fumble? We'll get another look at it, but Franks was originally in the shotgun. Went down to under center and just took it himself. And next thing you know, Team Blue has the football. So not sure if he got stripped in the pile or at the below, but they definitely, Team Blue definitely does come away with the football, so there you have it. A turnover. Hofer is going to give that one to Number 25, Corbin Larson. Corbin Larson. Yeah. Bus forward for a first down of his own. Malith McCarr that came up with that Football, by the way, for Team Blue, so. Just got stripped before he went down. That point is mute now, though, because Team Blue has the football. Eight and a half to go. Hofer's going to air one out to the sideline. Has Gettys in complete flag down. Jackson Gettys went up. There was a little bit of contact between him and a defensive back for the Team White. So Hofer immediately, as soon as he took that football, so it will be pass interference. So Team Blue will pick up the first down, probably not the way that they thought, but I don't think it matters. So fresh out of downs, Hofer back under center. Receivers in motion, there's the snap. Flags are down as Urban Larson will just plunge forward, pick up what he can, but let's check the flag. Looks as if it might be offside against Team White. Looks like it'll be offside against Team White. And it'll bring up a first and five. So Team Blue will be able to move up five yards. A couple of penalties have. Helped out this drive here for Team Blue. Hofer under center again. As running back gets wrapped up immediately in the backfield. That was Geddes, and he was met by a host of Team White tacklers. Dylan Bach was in there. Porter Hansen was in there. Matthew Noble was in there. Absolutely nothing doing there. But Bach was the one that made original contact. Porter Hansen came into. Help out. So second and eight. Be a loss of three. 
Ofer. Going to air that one out to the wide side of the field. That's Odenbake that makes the catch. And that'll be enough to move the chains. Time will continue to tick away here in quarter number four. Hofer goes back out of the gun now. There's the snap. Hofer's going to look over the middle. Has Bakke. Makes a nice catch. As I think Bakke might have heard some footsteps too, but he does a great job to ensure that he still catches the football. So that'll be a gain of a few. Second down. There's the snap. Hofer's going to step back. He's going to roll right. U Team White defenders in chase mode, and Geddes has to readjust to make the catch, and he does. Right near the 30 yard line. Is, that was a great catch there by Jackson Geddes, who had to reposition himself as Hofer's throw was a little off, not where he was expecting it. But Gettys makes the catch, and it's another first down for Team Blue. Hofer did a good job of getting out of the pocket as there was a few Team White defenders that were right in his grill. Gettys is able to adjust to make the catch. So first down, Hofer out of the gun, looking towards the sideline, has Bakke, a nice catch there by Odin Bakke. So Team Blue now is driving as they look to trim this lead. So Bakke has made a couple of big catches on this drive. Over out of the gun. Ofer is going to look over the middle, has a man that is caught. It's a touchdown. A good throw there from Hofer and Dylan Trombley makes the catch in tight, tight coverage. And with 5.05 left to go, we have a football game. So Hofer just threw that one over the middle, basically in what was double coverage. Great concentration by Trombley to haul that one in. So it looks as if Team Blue was late in getting guys on the field, but it's now all of a sudden a two-point ball game. So 5.05 to go. Team White will Get the football back. Try to kill some clock and try to add to this lead. This game is shaping up to be like the previous two games tonight, which have all been very good. Andrew Waithman has the ball on the tee. Two returners back for Team White. There's the kick. It'll go right to the one of the outmen, but that one goes off of his hands. He'll jump right on it. So is that McJanet? Yeah, it was. So McJanet tried to catch that one because it came right to him. And he'll jump on it. So Snyder is back in a quarterback for Team White. So out of the gun on first down. 
He'll give it to Nelson. Brody Nelson is going to bust outside. Brody Nelson has some room, makes a couple of men miss. And then he gets brought down out of bounds, but a good job there by Brody Nelson. As he picked up first down and way more. Sampling takes him down, out of bounds. First down, White. Great job there by Nelson to just protect the football, too. But high and tight and made sure nobody got it. So, first and 10, this time will tick down here in quarter number four. And now we're going to have flags all over the place. So some miscommunication on the offensive line for the team white offense. And it's a procedure on the so procedure. So that'll back them up five. So Bach will continue to run. There's the snap. Snyder to Benoit who gets wrapped up immediately. Torin Swiston Burns was in there. Gavin Mann was in there as well. So basically as soon as Nelson Touch the football, there is two blue jerseys right there. We have second and 18. Big play here as we approach the three minute warning. Low snap, Snyder has to pick it up off the turf. Now he has to run, goes inside, goes outside, has a man over the middle, but that one's incomplete. So third down, upcoming is just looking for McJanet over the middle. Angelo Almute at the coverage. Now Tieran Braun out to a punt and that one sails over his head. Tieran Braun now is just gonna have to pick it up, run for his life, still punts the football away. Good job by him to do that. It'll bounce. It'll be picked up by Geddes, who gets wrapped up. But a bad snap that one just Braun sailed right past Tieran Braun. And he was able to improvise and buy himself enough time to still punt it away and actually get a good punt at that. So just over the head of Tieran Braun, and now this sets up some fun because it is 16-14 for Team White. Team Blue has the ball. 2.15 counting to go, so here we go. Good field position here for Team Blue as well. Hofer out of the gun. He's going to look to his right, has Bakke, and out of the reach of... Odin Bakke on first down, so now that'll bring up second down with 239. So Quinn Hofer will get the play call from Corbin Larson. He checks the play in. We got second and 10. Receivers go in motion. There's the snap. Quick hitter. Wants to get it out to Dean. And he is wrapped up as soon as he caught the football. So good defense there from Team White. Number 10, Jackson Dean. As Jackson Dean was on the reception and Dylan Bach brought him down almost immediately. From Quinn Holfer. So it'll be third and eight. It appears that the offense will stay out onto the field. 
Not sure what good punting does here anyways. It's third and eight, lots of time left still. Hofer is gonna roll out to his right. He's trying to look for a man and he is just gonna throw that one while he did have a man, that was Trombley, but to tiptoe the sideline and couldn't bring it in. So that will now go for a turnover on downs. So out comes Team White. So still in for a good finish with 209 left. Lots of time. Team Blue does need to stop though. Team White will break the huddle. Snyder in a quarterback. As he'll just hand that one off to Nelson who looks for some room and he gets brought down. Nathan Jule on the tackle. So second and seven. So there's your decent stop on first down. And it looks as if Team Blue is taking a timeout. Second and seven. Here's the snap. Snyder gets that one out to Braun, who makes the catch right near the first down marker. Going to be close. But I think he's going to be just short. They call in for a measurement here. No, they're going to say it's third down. So third and one, more like third and the length of half of a football. Officials are just confirming that the spot is correct. So here we go, minute 57 to go. Team White trying to hang on to this lead. Snyder will go under center. He drops the football, Team Blue's on it. What a tough break for Clark Snyder as he went under center and they were, I assume, just gonna try to plow forward and Snyder couldn't handle the snap. And Torrance Weiston Burns jumps on it. So now there's a minute 54 left. That was a tough break there for Team White. So now here we go. It's a two-point game. Team Blue looking to take the lead. Hofer looks to the sideline out of the reach of Odenbake as he's been trying to hit him quite often in the second half. So that'll bring up second down. Still lots of time here. You gotta think even if Team White did pick up that first down. Assuming that Team Blue would have got a stop, they would have been able to get the football back. But either way, here we are. Second and 10. Team White now needing a big stop. Hofer 
Going to drop back. Pass time over the middle. That one is incomplete as both Tremblay and Jackson Geddes were in the vicinity. So good defensive coverage there by the team white secondary. And that'll bring up third and 10. There's the snap, Hofer, he's gonna step up. He's gonna take off himself and just gets brought down. It looked like he had an opportunity to run for the first down, but ever so slightly was wrapped up. And it was just enough to cause him to lose his balance and fall and have that go as a tackle. So now we'll see a turnover on downs. 1.44 to go. Team White's going to come back out. That's going to be Clark Snyder. Trying to make amends for that earlier fumble. We'll see what Team Blue has drawn up here. Nelson tries to go up the middle. Picks up a few yards, but it stopped. Javen Mann on the tackle. So second and four. How big will this stop be? Snyder gets it to... Nelson trying to find a hole, picks up the first down, and that's huge. Great job there by Brody Nelson. Brody Nelson is, he showed great patience in the backfield, waiting for a hole to open up. One finally did. Picks up the first down. Now have a member of Team White injured. So he'll get attended to. Of course, Summit Sports and Health providing the medical coverage for all SMF events in 2020. On what has been a chilly but a fantastic night of football at SMF Field. Two great games earlier tonight. Of course, Team Green 2 and Team Yellow faced off to kick things off this evening. Team Green 2 walked away with a 17-10 win. And then Team Green 1 got away with a three-point win, 17-14, over Team Black in the second game of the night and the third and final game of the night. Well, it's going to come down to the wire, too. It's a 16-14 Team White lead with 1.19 to go. The injured player who I can't seem to get a number on is still getting attended to. And it looks like he'll get to his feet. It looks like that's Cole Benoit. So he'll walk off under his own power, which is always great to see. Snyder got the play call from the sideline, so he's ready to Set that play in motion. So first and 10, Snyder to Nelson. 
who is able to spin away from a few tackles and carries the pile for a few yards. So a good run on first down for Brody Nelson. Bring up second and four. So clock will continue to run as we now have hit the final minute of quarter number four. We'll give it to Nelson who gets wrapped up and spun around immediately. What a job there by Nathan Jule. As he just worked his way into that backfield and Run around to everybody. That was second down as well. So now it's third and 10 with 48 seconds to go. And this is going to be a punting situation. Tieran Braun now out to punt the ball away for Team White. So he's going to try to, well, he'll take the clock down first. So they'll take a timeout after letting the play clock run down to one, which will allow 30 seconds to be left on the game clock. So there's the snap. It's good. Good punt from Braun. And then Geddes is going to let that bounce. He'll pick it up off of a hop as... He looks to see what he can get on the return at the far sideline. So now there's 20 seconds left to go. We'll see what Team Blue's offense can come up with. One of these teams is going to get their first win of the academy tonight. Team White's in the lead. 16-14, 20 seconds to go. Here we go. Team Blue has a lot of field to cover. Hofer gets a good snap. Great protection. Now he's going to have to bounce outside. Now he's going to have to run. He's going to try to work away from a few defenders and does, and he'll just try to hit Gettys. And that one went off of Getty's hands and falls incomplete. We have second and ten. Nine seconds to go. There's the snap. Hofer is going to step up. He's going to put that one over the middle in and out of the hands of Geddes. That'll leave 3.3 seconds left on the clock, however. So one last opportunity. So third down. Of course, game can't end on a penalty flag. But assuming that there isn't one, this will be the final play of the ball game. So 16-14, Team White trying to hang on. Three receivers out to Quinn Hofer's right. There's the snap. Going to step back. He's going to give it to Bakke. And Bakke's going to try to make a couple of men miss and does, but eventually gets wrapped up uh, right near the Team White sideline. And that'll do it as there will be a little meeting between the two teams, but that does it. Yes, it does. Well, the officials will head to the sideline as there's a little bit of confusion there, but that is indeed the end of the football game. So tonight's final for the third and final football sask. Elite Academy game, Team White 16, Team Blue 14, so they will get their first win of the season.
A big thanks to everybody that tuned in for all three games. Maybe you just tuned in for one. Pleasure to be with you all evening long as we will be doing the exact same thing coming up on Wednesday, October the 28th. Until then, I'm Matt Morrison. Thanks for taking along. Good night.